right, in this video, I'm gonna continue section uh, 9.1, dealing with determining probabilities, okay? So I'm gonna start off with uh, mutually exclusive events. Okay, so this is where I'm picking up with uh, what we talked about in class before. All right, events A and B are mutually exclusive if they have no elements in common. That is, and this symbol means the intersection of the two events, A and B is equal to the empty set. So in this example, let's say I want to consider one spin on the wheel. So here's the wheel right here. And the sample space <clears throat> in this case will be from zero to nine, okay? As you can see, there are 10 digits from zero to nine. Let's say event A would be zero, one, two, three, and four. That's, we can say, spinning a number less than five. And also event B would be five and seven, okay? So if event A occurs, then event B cannot occur. And as you can see here, that these two events have nothing in common, okay? So if you took the intersection of set A with the intersection of set B, you would end up with the empty set because those two sets have no elements in common. Okay, so if events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B would be this. The probability of A union B, so here this is the symbol for union, which is corresponding to the word or, that would be equivalent to the probability of, of event A plus the probability of event B. So here the probability of the union of events such that, that, that any two mutually exclusive events is gonna be the sum of the probabilities of those events. The probability of the union of events where any two mutually exclusive events, that's going to be the sum of those two events. So just the sum of those probabilities. So like in this example here, if A and B are mutually exclusive, meaning they have nothing in common, and the probability of A is 0.5 and the probability of B is 0.4, then the probability of A union B would be what? All right, so in this case here, okay, union is the other way around. So the probability of A union B, which is the same as saying the probability of A or the probability of B is just simply the probability of the two, the sum of the probabilities of those two events here. Because A and B are indicated as being mutually exclusive. So in this case, the probability of A is 0.5, plus the probability of event B is 0 0.4. 0 0.5 plus 0.4 is 0 0.9. So the probability of A or B, <clears throat> or the, or the uh, probability of the union of A and B will be 0.9. Okay, next we'll look at complementary events. Two mutually exclusive events whose union is the sample space are complementary events. Like for example, let's say I want to consider the event A, which has the elements two, four of Tasi, uh, two or four using a standard die. The complement of A, and that's going to be the set where we use this notation. A with a bar on top. That means the complement of set A. That's going to be these numbers, one, three, five, and six. <clears throat> okay. Now, because the sample space is this for rolling a standard die, S is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. The probability of event A will be two over six where the probability of the complement of event A will be four out of six, okay? Because event A is just a two and a four on a die with six faces. So it'll be two out of six. 
the remaining numbers that we don't roll, one, three, five, and six, that's a complement, its probability will be four out of six. So if A is an event and A complement is its complement, A with the bar on top, then the probability of A plus the probability of the complement of event A will always equal to one. And then if I just want the probability of the complement of event A, and if I know what the probability of event A is, then I can do one minus the probability of event A to get the complement, the probability of the complement of A. Or if I know what the complement of event A is and I want its probability, then it's going to be one minus the probability of the complement of event A. All right, so in this example here, <clears throat> okay, you have to excuse that yellow line there on, this, uh, on that page. A set of dolls in a, is in a packing crate, two with blonde hair, five with black hair, and six with red hair. If one doll is drawn at random from the crate, what is the probability that the doll's hair is not red? Okay, so let's find out how many dolls that we have here. So the number of dolls is just the sum of the number of blonde, the ones with blonde hair, the ones with black hair, and the ones with red hair. So if I add two plus five, that's seven. Seven plus six will be 13. So there are 13 total dolls in that crate. And I want to find the probability of a doll that's not red, selecting a doll that doesn't have red hair. Well, that would be a complement. So I can do one minus the complement or the probability of selecting a redhead. Because not red and red are complements of each other. The probability of selecting a red hair, a doll with red hair, there's six of them out of 13. So I'm gonna have one minus six over 13. That's probably a selecting a red hair, red hair doll. All right, so I need to subtract six thirteenths from one whole. Of course, one whole is going to be 13 out of 13 because of the denominator that I'm dealing with is 13. So you think of how many 13s are there in one whole? There are 13 of them. Minus 6 over 13, which will give you 7 over 13. And of course, another way you could have gotten that answer there would, would be if a red hair doll is not going to be selected, then guess what? I have two with blonde hair and five with uh, black hair. Two plus five would give you seven out of the total number of dolls is 13. So the probability of not selecting a doll with red hair would be seven over 13. Okay, here's another example. 100 men and 90 women are enrolled in calculus. There are 40 business majors, 50 biology majors, 55 computer science majors, and 45 mathematics majors. No person has a double major. If a single calculus student is chosen, find the following probabilities. Okay, so in this case, I want the probability that the student is a female. All right, let's find out the total number of students that we have here in this case. There are 100 men and 90 women. So that total is 190. You could have also gotten the 190 from adding the number of majors that are there, 40 and 50, that's 90, plus 55 is 145, plus 45 is 190. So there's 190 men and women. So the probability that a student is female, well, there are 90 women out of 190, so that probability would be 90 over 190. 
Now, if we were to write that in its simplest form, then I would have to divide the numerator and the denominator by 10 since both of these numbers end in zero. So this would be nine over 19. Okay, so that's our fraction in simplest form, nine over 19 for the probability that a student is a female. All right, the next one is find the probability that the student is a biology major. All right, so let's find out how many biology majors we have here from this problem. There are 50 of them. And that's out of the total of 190. So this will be 50 over 190. If I divide the numerator and the denominator by 10, this, this will be five over 19. So the probability that a student is a biology major will be five nineteenths. All right, the other next is found the probability that the student is not a business major. Not a business major would mean we need to look at biology majors, computer science majors, and mathematics majors. All right, so let's add those. 45 and 55, that's uh, 100. And then plus the 50 biology majors, that's 150 out of the total of 190. So this would be 150 over 190. And I'll divide the numerator and the denominator by 10. Since both, the, both 150 and 190 end in zero, they're both divisible by 10. So this would be 15 over 19. So the probability that a student is not a business major would be 15 over 19. And then found the probability that the student is a biology major or a business major. So here we're using the word or. So that means we need to add how many biology majors there are and how many business majors they are. there are. Well, the biology majors, there are 50 of them. So this will be 50 over the total 190 plus business majors. There are 40 business majors over 190. If we add those two probabilities together, 50 and 40, that's 90 over 190. And of course, in simplest form, dividing the numerator and the denominator by 10, this will end up being 9 over 19. So here, the probability that the student is a biology major or a business major would be 9 over 19. Okay. Well, since we have mutually exclusive events, we also have non-mutually exclusive events like this. Let's say we let A be the event of spinning an even number. So here's our spinner right here. And then in this case, your E is gonna be these numbers, two, 14, and 18. Because if you look at the spinner, you have the number two, the number 14, and the number 18. Those are even numbers. And then I'll let T be the event of spinning a multiple of seven. Well, there are only three numbers on this wheel that are multiples of seven. And that's seven itself, 14 and 21, which represents this. Okay. So here, if I take the probability of E or T, then that's going to be the number in E or T divided by the number in that sample space. So that's the probability of event E plus the probability of event T. Now notice we got this. We have to subtract off the probability of event E and T. Reason for that because this is not mutually exclusive because what do you see in event E that is also in event E that's also in event T? The 14. It's only one number that's in the, both event E and T, and that's the number 14. Okay. Now, the probability of event E, 
the three numbers out of the total of eight. There are eight numbers on that spinner. So that's three out of eight for the probability of event E. For the probability of event T, there are three possibilities out of eight. That's also three out of eight. But we also have to subtract off what's common in both. There's only one number that's common in both, and that's the number 14. So that's one out of eight. We need to subtract. And this we do to avoid what they call double counting. So we subtract one eight so that we can avoid that double counting. So three eights plus three eights is six eights. Six eights minus one eight is five over eight. Okay. So that's what we mean by non mutually exclusive events. Right, and on the last page is the summary of probability properties. Okay. Now we kind of went over the first, I say the first three uh, properties. The probability of an empty set is zero, which is called an impossible event. The probability of the sample space will always be one. Yes, this is a sample space. We call that a certain event. And then number three, for any event, the probability of event A will be some value between zero and one. And that does include zero and one. Keep in mind, probabilities can't be negative and probabilities cannot be a number bigger than one. Then number four, if A and B are events and A intersect B, the intersection of A and B is the empty set, then the probability of A or B would be the sum of the two probabilities the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. And then, now this one is for mutually exclusive events. For non-mutually exclusive events, we use this. The probability of A or B would be the probability of event A plus the probability of event B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, you subtract off what's common in both A and B, and how many elements that are common in both A and B. And then the last one is the complementary event. If A is an event, then the probability of A complement will always be one minus the probability of event A. Okay, the last thing is the uh, geometric property using area models. A probability model that uses geometric shapes is an area model. When area models are used to determine probabilities geometrically, outcomes are associated with points chosen at random in a geometric region that represents a sample space. This process is referred to as finding geometric probabilities. So like in this example here, let's say I want to design a geometric model for the following experiments, like tossing a fair coin, okay? Now, in this case, I can draw a square, and I can use a diagonal here to split the square up into two triangles, and my spinner will be at the center. The top part would be heads, the one at the bottom would be tails, okay? So that's just a geometric model. Or well, what about rolling a fair die? Here's one geometric model that we can use here. In this case here, I can draw a hexagon. Since I have a fair die with six sides on it, numbered one through six. Okay, so I can draw a hexagon, draw diagonals, and label each triangle from one through six. So that would be a geometric design for uh, representing the rolling of a fair die. Okay. So that's all I have in this video. That does conclude this video on the rest of section 9.1 dealing with determining probabilities.
Um, if you have any questions, do feel free to reach out to me.